you're anything like me when it comes to reading, you are always in the middle of multiple series. I always end up finishing them, but I tend to take a little while because I usually prefer reading series. Obviously, they're a longer commitment than standalone books, and therefore, if I'm reading multiple of them, it's going to take me a while to read and complete each and every one. So today, I'm going to talk to you about all of the different series I intend to either continue, to finish, or to begin in the year 2023. We'll start with one that I already began to continue in the beginning parts of the year of 2023, and that is Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive. I have already finished Words of Radiance. It didn't take me long to get absolutely obsessed with this book the same way I was obsessed with Way of Kings, if not more. I think I liked this one more than Way of Kings, and I feel like I tend to be a second book in the series type of person. I'm starting to find that. And I already can't wait to jump into Oathbringer very soon, and if you're anything like me again and you like something a lot, you cannot get enough of it and you will not stop until you are finished with it because you can never get enough of it. So I'm sure right after that I will jump into Rhythm of War. The next series I intend to get caught up on, which will not take very long, and there's no shade being thrown there. We're all cool. We're doing all right. The Kingkiller Chronicles. I will be reading Wise Man's Fear soon. It is likely one of the next books on my TBR for this year. Very excited to get into this one. Name of the Wind was one of my favorite books of 2022. I read it incredibly quickly. I could not get enough of Quoth's story. And don't get me wrong, I understand how frustrated everybody is. I've talked about it on this channel before. I can't wait to get into this one. It's significantly longer, it seems, than the first book. I know people have all different kinds of opinions on the series, the author, the first book, everything. I don't care. I'm excited to read this book. And you're not going to ruin it for me. And I know, I'll be waiting just like the rest of you for the third book but I have a little something called hope and we'll get there together. The next one, sort of in the same vein as uh, King Killer Chronicles there, is going to be the Song of Ice and Fire series. This is a series that obviously I watched when the Game of Thrones show was massive on HBO. And then I eventually made my way back to the series by starting book one with my girlfriend Lauren, probably back in like 2018, 2019. And then a few years went by before I read the second book, which was last year in 2022. And I ended up reading not only book two, but book three and book four. And I finished book four in the beginning of August of 2022. And I decided right there and then that I would wait as long as possible to read book five. Book three of the Song of Ice and Fire series is one of my favorite fantasy books of all time, Storm of Swords. And I, I just want to prolong this experience for as long as I can. I have hope that George R.R. R. Martin will write that sixth book. I feel like he wants that closure. We want that closure. I'm going to end up caving in reading book five, A Dance with Dragons, at some point in 2023. I don't know when it will be, but it's going to happen. And again, just like with King Killer, I will be waiting with all of you. And again, I'm going to hold strong onto hope. And now we will move to series that I intend to begin. The first one is on my top priority reads for 2023. That is the first Law trilogy from Joe Abercrombie, starting with the the Blade itself. Again, this is a trilogy, so I will very likely just end up reading the whole thing this year, and I'm very excited to get into it. I've heard nothing but good things from everybody who has read this. It seems like for the typical fantasy, especially compared to what I have been reading, has a very gritty edge to it, and I feel like I've been sort of longing for that in my fantasy reads. The next one, on good authority, I was told that I need to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy before I get into this. So the Shadow and Bone trilogy from Lee Bardugo. That is on my top priority list, so I can eventually get to this one, Six of Crows. I've heard so many great things about Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology, everything that has to do with the Grishaverse, people seem to swear by. So I, I want to jump on the bandwagon finally. I know I'm a couple years too late at this point, but I, I want to read these books. And apparently the little crossovers, the little Easter eggs that are fun to recognize in the Six of Crows duology, you have to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy to begin with. So I'm going to try to do that in the near future so that I can get to these books. Been sitting on my shelf for so long. One of my main goals is to continue to read all the books I own in this room behind me. And I guess part of that is going to be having to buy more books in order to do so. And the final two series that I want to begin are behemoths when it comes to series. The first one, Wheel of Time. I'm sure you saw that coming with all the Sanderson, with all the Rothfuss, with all the George R. R. Martin. Naturally, I'm going to end up with 
the Wheel of Time at some point. And I have the first three books en route to my house at this very moment. I picked them up from a used bookseller online, trying to buy more books from independent sellers online or at sort of like mom and pop independent shops in person lately. I've seen people who have DNF'd this series halfway through. I think it's like 14 books long. So that scares me a little bit, but I have other people who talk about this series like it is the reason that the world is good and it is the reason they read to begin with. So either way, I'm sure it will be an interesting experience getting into the Wheel of Time. In the final series I intend to begin this year, The Dresden Files from Jim Butcher. This is one that I have avoided for admittedly very superficial reasons. I am a victim of the cover buy of the sort of seeking out aesthetics from time to time and the just like graphic design of the majority of Dresden Files editions I've seen. I've just been like what the, what the heck is this? I don't I don't want to read this. I didn't even read the back of the book. I had no idea what it was about, but sort of getting to know the general gist and approach of this, it seems like something I would like. It's all about this like magical detective essentially who gets pulled into like a Chicago PD case. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. If you're a huge Dresden Files person, we're gonna, we're gonna try our best with that one. So starting a 14 book fantasy series as well as what the Dresden Files is, is almost just as long, if not longer. I should have my work cut out for me here in 2023. Those are all the series I intend to continue, begin, or finish this year. And it seems like it's harder to find successful or popular fantasy books that are standalone books. I love standalone fantasy books, but it just seems like series are what what the marketplace is all about these days. So give me recommendations for your favorite series down below or your favorite fantasy standalones. I'd love to hear all of the above. Make sure to leave a like, to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.